Of course, I've read about the persecution of Falun Gong practitioners in the newspapers, but it was actually meeting some Falun Gong practitioners and hearing firsthand their experience that uh, made me realize we needed to do more to raise the world's profile to this issue. Falun Gong's guiding principles are truthfulness, compassion, and forbearance. The practice is peaceful, non-political, non-religious, free of charge and of great benefit to practitioners' health and moral standards. Introduced to the general public in 1992 by Mr. Lee Hongju, Falun Gong is practiced in over 50 countries around the world. Before the crackdown, 100 million people were practicing Falun Gong in China, more than the members in the Communist Party. Afraid that the movement was a threat to his power, Jiang Zemin initiated a ban on Falun Gong in 1999. He thought that he could eliminate Falun Gong in three months, but he was wrong. To see such a terrible persecution for me, it was, it was just absurd. And I couldn't understand at first why it was happening. I failed, you know, my duty was to talk about human rights and freedom because it's very important. I couldn't understand why they were persecuting such good people. The persecution is very, very severe. For example, with Falun Gong, you have thousands of people who have been detained. They have been sent to re-education camps. Uh, the leaders have got sentences from two to 18 years. Um, uh, the normal practitioners uh, have been given re-education sentences of up to three years. They have been subjected to torture. There have been over 200 deaths in custody. And uh, all this for the peaceful expression of uh, their freedom of belief, uh, which is guaranteed in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which China is a party to. I am a master's degree student in a university in the UK, and uh, I went back to China in 1999. Uh, just because we are Falun Gong practitioners, we were arrested for seven days, and uh, they beaten us, um, although I was an eight months pregnant woman. After several days, they deported us back to the UK. And uh, um, just one month later, my daughter, Ming Hui Yu, was born in Swansea. They told me that if we carried on practicing Falun Gong, my daughter Ming Hui would never be registered and uh, she would never get her own passport. Since then, we have no choice. We had to be asylum seekers. They did not register Ming Kui on the passport of Zheng Fang Mo or her partner as a Chinese citizen. So I've been trying to establish the citizen status of Ming Kui. And I think it's not right that any young child you know, obviously is denied the right of citizenship, which is a fundamental human right that it should be open to us all. I think the case of Zhao Ming in particular highlighted in a very uh, specific way the problem that uh, exists for people who uh, practice Falun Gong and the fact that he had been a student here, was living in Dublin, made it very real for many people and um, I think as well forced the Irish government to take it up in a very specific way when the uh, Chinese Premier was here in Ireland some time ago. He's been in prison in a labour camp in China since May 2000 and he was just recently released um, on March the 12th from uh, Tuanhe Labour Camp near Beijing. And we're here today to welcome back to Trinity and to his new life, Xiaomi. During a period of two weeks, I was only allowed to, to sleep only one to two hours each day during the two weeks period. And on some other occasions, we are not, uh, we are physically punished, forced to 
to do a kind of a military squatting for a very long time, more than 10 hours a day. And it's really a very, it's very bad to, to, to my legs. Now I still feel have no, have no, having no feelings at the bottom part of my legs. Just two weeks before I get out from the living, living camp, five uh, policemen using six, six electric batons to, to shock me all over the body. And uh, the electricity is over at least uh, 30,000 volts. We want the Irish government and other European governments to put real pressure on the Chinese authorities, and I think that the uh, pressure has to be stepped up um, considerably. It is just not good enough that people are in large numbers, or in any numbers, being persecuted, being thrown out of their work, being imprisoned, being sent off to, to camps and so on for their uh, beliefs when they are obviously not in any way um, interfering with uh, other people's rights or doing criminal or other damage. The crackdown uh, of Falun Gong is really going ahead in a very brutal way. We have been following the situation since summer 1999, and when we got the first news about deaths in prison, we had been shocked, but what we are seeing today, it's really a catastrophe.